It is possible that we think we're doing right, and we're really not. Profiling the apostles. And evolution's Achilles heels. All of this and more coming up next on Bible Discovery TV Weekend Edition here on this station. Good morning, this is Quick Study Weekend Edition. I'm Rod Hembry. I'm Corey. And I'm Ryan. And this program takes you through the Bible in one year. We actually are doing it chronologically this year, which is very interesting as we mm -hmm. study on. And we're going to be studying something interesting today. Now, if you think you're right, but you're really wrong, you're not, uh, you're not alone. In Acts chapter 9, we come across a guy who thought he was right. It's possible that we think we're doing well, but we're not. All of this and more coming up in just a minute as we continue on this particular segment. Bible history and archaeology is also here. Corey? Yeah, well, today uh, we are going to be putting together a historical biography of some of the apostles of the Bible. We're going to be doing uh, focusing in on Paul specifically. Paul the Apostle mm -hmm. in the Bible. All right, very good. Ryan, what's up your sleeve? Well, it's a good one. Today we're talking with Dr. Jim Mason, and I'm asking him about the new book that he's been a part of called Evolution's Achilles Heels. Evolution's Achilles Heel. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's very good. That book is uh, a very interesting book. If you want to know where to get that book, stay there. We'll teach you and tell you how to do that. In the meantime, get your Bible out as we continue to study it right here on Quick Study Television. period represented by the book of Acts is really a very formative time in early church history. And there were leaders that rose to the surface that were often persecuted for their Christian beliefs. First, let's take a look at James. James, the brother of Jesus Christ, is an intriguing person both in and out of the New Testament. That he is the brother of Jesus through Mary and Joseph is put forward in the Gospels, as well as his original disbelief in Jesus as the Son of God. At some point, however, this belief changed. James, brother of Jesus, became James the Just, James the Bulwark of the People, James the Righteous, first Christian Bishop of Jerusalem. In the book of Acts, Jesus' mother and brothers, including James, are in Jerusalem with the disciples. 1 Corinthians 15 records Jesus specifically appearing to James within that time. Through the rest of the book of Acts, any major occurrence in Jerusalem includes James. He is a key person in the education of the Apostle Paul. He acts as an authority among the disciples as well as authoring a letter of the New Testament. From sources outside of the Bible, the rest of the life of James the Just can be pieced together. According to all accounts, James was highly respected. He was elected Bishop of Jerusalem without argument. He was raised as a Nazarite, a man with vows to God, a man so dedicated to praying for the people that his knees became calloused sparking another affectionate nickname, Camel Knees. James' earthly life came to an end violently. One Passover, conspirators had their perfect chance. They asked James to teach the crowd from a high spot on the temple. During his sermon, they pushed the elderly man off. The fall did not kill him, so his accusers began to stone him for blasphemy. But James continued to pray for them. Finally, a launderer hit James on the head with a club to finish off the dying man. 
This is the testimony of James, brother of Jesus. The strong men who were against the church when it first emerged were powerful. They were unstoppable. Saul was one of them, a man who came against those who claimed that they had received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The people were afraid of the persecution. You see, Stephen had claimed the power of Christ, that is Jesus Christ, and had chosen to tell the people about his experience, which he was stoned to death for. God allowed it. It seemed to be as those who hated Jesus Christ had the upper hand. They were successful in defeating the new Christians. Let's explore. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. It is a great day to read the Bible. It is a great day to understand the reading of Acts. As we look at the scripture today, it is the weekend edition this is excellent. Now, I want to tell you, beloved, that God loves you, and he gave you the book of Acts so that you can study it and you can understand it and become a part of what he's doing. Why does he want that to happen? Because God desires you to be a part of his eternal life now. Eternal life doesn't begin when you die. Eternal life begins now. He says, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And you may be in the persecuted church, but the persecuted church has a role and has a, a movement. And it really shines forth in the rest of the world. Very important. And so today, as we look at the overview, we begin to understand this. We're talking about strong Christians. Now, Christians, according to the book of Acts, were called Christians, first of all, in Antioch. And so the reading assignment is Acts chapter 9 to 11. 
Now, this is an amazing point as we look at this because Acts 9 through 11 is fascinating. And so we look at this and we say, wait a minute, Acts 9 and 11, let's look at chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 11. So as we look at this, we begin to understand that there are four points in the written guide that you have. Well, if you don't have it, you should write for the guide and get it and uh, check it out for yourself. But we're going to teach three because that's the time that we have today for the three. So let us begin with three guides. Now we begin this way with Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. And as we look at this, pay attention to the details. Then Saul... Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, and Saul asked for letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were in the way, whether men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven, and then he fell to the ground and he heard a, uh, a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> now, I have a question for you. If you're doing something and then you, you get addressed by a light from heaven and he says, why are you doing this? You might want to pay attention. Saul paid attention. Saul was Paul. And this happened because Saul was breathing threats upon the Christians. Now, I thought about that and I realized that there's something very important because Saul was the kind of guy who was perfect. He was like, I want to do this right. And he was all that way, trained at the feet of Gamaliel. Now, it is possible that we persecute Jesus Christ as God when we are trying to help God's kingdom. I want you to think about that. How many times, beloved, do you actually do the wrong thing when you're trying to do the right thing? It's important that we address ourselves and realize what right and wrong actually is. And I think that's a difficult lesson because some of us were raised and we were raised and, and, and the thing is that, you know, we were told that we have to wear dresses, you know, or that's not pleasing to God. And so we push for dresses, but that's not necessarily true. And this is important that we understand what is happening here. Saul is persecuted for the reason of persecuting Jesus Christ by pushing Christians out of the church. Now that's important as we look at this. Let's take a look at the next scripture. Here is Acts chapter 9, 5 and 6. And he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? And then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So trembling and astonished, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then the Lord said, Arise and go into the city. You will be told what to do and what you must do. Now this is an important point, a turning point in the history of this particular lesson. This guy, Paul, well, Saul would become Paul, and then he would write at least 13 letters of the New Testament. And he would be a life-changing event for the Gentiles, which brings me to this point. It is possible to think we are doing well, and we're really not doing well. Now, I want to address those people who are in the church and those people who are uh, paying attention to try to do the right thing with God. Are you really doing the right thing with God? Are you really pursuing the right avenue? Because you need to check that and you need to make sure that, that your alignment is with the Bible and not with the church traditions. So important, very important. And so as we think about that, may we ask that question today. Then we go on to the scripture in verse 7, chapter 9. It says, and the men who journeyed with him, they stood speechless because they heard a voice, but they saw no one. And then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. But they led him by hand, and they brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight. He neither ate nor drank three days without sight. Now let me tell you why. Because when you're blind, that's considered a curse from God. 
by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the people. In fact, when one guy was blind and they said, Lord, who is the one who offended God, him or his parents? And that's how interesting this was. Saul was blinded, beloved, and you need to recognize this because it's important. It is possible to think that you're serving God when you do not know God. Saul did not know God. He became Paul when he understood God. He could see again when he realized a Christian would come to him from another place and actually lay hands on him and heal him. The very people that he wanted to destroy and to kill because they were, uh, in his mind, uh, imitating God were the ones who would heal him. All because he had a wrong image of what God was doing. Jesus Christ is alive today. Acts tells us of the conversion of, of one of the most unlikely people, Saul. He, uh, he converts to Christianity after persecuting Christians as a whole and has his name changed to Paul. Let's explore. The Apostle Paul is involved in approximately one-third of the New Testament of the Bible. His relationship with Christ forged his teaching on Christianity and helped to form Christian understanding of the Gospels and the Old Testament. Paul was raised as a Pharisee, so his role in interpreting Christ for believers is very fitting. The term Pharisee is translated separated ones, coming from the Hebrew root perush, meaning to separate or to interpret. Paul, a converted Pharisee, was himself focused on correctly interpreting the Old Testament and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Details of Paul's early life are revealed throughout his speeches in Acts and in his New Testament letters. He was born in Tarsus, the capital and privileged city of the Roman province of Syria. Paul was born into Roman citizenship through his family, which gave him maneuverability and protection during his teaching career. As a Roman citizen, Paul would have had three names, of which we only know his surname, his cognomen, Paulos. Paul's extensive travels through the Roman Empire, building up Christian communities, are often categorized into three missionary journeys ending with a two-year imprisonment in Caesarea and a transfer to Rome in an appeal to Caesar. The Book of Acts concludes with Paul under house arrest in Rome. Then the Bible goes silent, but Paul's history does not. Early Christian history points to Paul being released and continuing his missions, possibly even achieving a visit to Spain mentioned by Paul in Romans chapter 15. What is clear is that any new mission was not long lived. Paul was rearrested and beheaded during Emperor Nero's persecution of the Christians. War. When is it right? When is it wrong? There are principles guiding us in this fallen world to make good decisions about when to fight and how to fight. Join Corey, Janice, and Rod Hembry as they uncover the facts of war and learn what the Bible says about holy war. This video is critical for every believer to know now. When is it right to go to war? your copy write to us and send $25 as an offering or more to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada and the rest of the world, write to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. You can also get this particular video at www.biblediscoverytv.com. For safe giving, give there.
Thank you for joining us next time on the Quick Study Television program. We're going to be studying Acts chapter 12 to 14. Peter was saved by God's angel, but he didn't even know that he was saved and rescued until he was out in the street. We'll talk about that and more still to come here on Quick Study Television. And we also have Rye, who is here with the science guy. Ryan, what is going on? Well, today we're talking with retired nuclear physicist, Dr. Jim Mason. And in today's interview, I ask him to tell us a little bit about the book called Evolution's Achilles Heels. Now, this book has been written by nine PhD scientists, one of which is Dr. Mason himself. This book examines the seemingly most powerful arguments for evolution and then demonstrates scientifically that these powerful arguments for evolution are actually fatal weak points. But is this book for scientists only? Let's talk with Dr. Mason. I would think uh, Evolution's Achilles Heels is a book that every Christian ought to have on their bookshelves. Uh, it covers all of the real sensitive areas of this creation-evolution debate and demonstrates quite clearly why none of the arguments that are made in support of evolution actually stand up to close scientific scrutiny. And the evidence is all as you would expect if you treated Genesis as historical narrative. In particular, I think it's, it's a good book. We're, we're, we're admonished in the Bible to do two things. One is to be able to give an answer to everyone who asks us for the reason for the hope that we have, and the other is to demolish arguments that set themselves up against God or God's Word. And I think the uh, Evolution's Achilles Heels is an excellent book for the second thing because what it does is it, it looks at the specific aspects of evolution and how to demolish them. So whereas there are you know, lots of other books that are good for the other thing to be able to give an answer, like the answers book, uh, the Evolution's Achilles Heels I think is really kind of dealing with that second admonition to be able to demolish arguments because that's what it does. Science progresses by attack and counterattack, if you like. I mean, somebody puts up a theory and somebody else has at it, right? And then they have at each other, or no, they don't have at each other. But the, so that's how science progresses, is that you, you kind of critique what's been put on the table, right? Evolution's been put on the table. It should be subject to critique. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be. Evolution's Achilles Heels is not just a book, but it's actually an entire project. So for more information, you'll need to go to CMI's website at creation.com. Creation.com is a great website. It's one of those websites that I encourage people to, when they go to it, have some extra time because when you go to the website, you're reading a story and you'll get other stories connected to it. So you have to have other stories mm -hmm. that you connect to. And there's all kinds of things there, things about dinosaurs, things about the different races on the planet. It's very good. And it's a biblical site as well. Corey, I want to mention something that I think a lot of people are not aware of, and that's something that I need to say because it's important. If you are not on the mailing list, you will not receive the 2015 Bible Guide. But if you are on the mailing list, you will receive the Bible Guide. That's both in the United States and Canada and Europe and all, all countries, anywhere. So if you want to get on the Bible Guide or are, want to receive the Bible Guide and get on the mailing list, then make sure you write to us today. And the address is P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, one five six six eight zero one five zero. That's PO Box one fifty, Murraysville, Pennsylvania. One five six six eight zero one five zero. In Canada, the rest of the world in Canada use this address. PO Box four five six, Orangeville, Ontario. L nine W five G two. That's PO Box four five six, Orangeville, Ontario. L nine W 5G2. You can also call us with a credit card if you want to use your credit card. It is 724-733-8336 in the USA. In Canada, it is 519-940-8338.
Another thing I should say is that you can get a hold of us by writing to us uh, on the guide. That is the uh, pocket guide, and you can do that on the internet. On the www.biblediscoverytv.com. BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Don't forget the TV. difficult to try and understand what God is doing when He is doing something different and unique. What is your role in His activity and where are you supposed to go? What are you supposed to do in it? The great involvement of Ananias in his assignment to see Paul the Apostle is a great exercise and a way through which God restores. There is great strength for life when we see that God does things for a purpose. Ananias knew the power of Saul to kill him. He knew that Saul had permission from the high priest to kill and gather rewards for it. And even though he protested, he was still willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and consider the work of the Lord. With that, we pray, Lord, help me to look carefully at the things that you want me to do. In our Strength in Your Mind segment, there's a great Bible quote for you. Where does the Bible say? New King James Version, quote, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Given to us. What's that about? Well, that's interesting. If you think you know the answer to that, then go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and, com and, strength and uh, click on Strength in Your Mind, and it'll take you to the place where you can get all the answers for that. I encourage you to do that. But I, I want to tell you about somebody, Jesus Christ, who's alive, and He brought you this program today. And He brought this program to you so that you would know that He desires you to be with Him. Now, He came and He gave His life. He did that for you, and He rose again. He did that for you, but He said, you must choose. He chose you, but you must choose him. Come to Jesus today and pray and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I believe you died and rose again, and I give you my life today. Thank you for joining us today on Quick Study Bible Discovery TV. Remember, we are supported by viewers just like you. Would you become a Discovery Partner and support us with an offering in any amount? You can do so by supporting online at Bible Discovery TV. Dot com.